Hi everyone. Good morning. Hello. It's the last day of GamerX. <laughs> but we're all together. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's all about the highs and lows. Yeah. <laughs> I like to take you out and bring you back in. <laughs> I'm Jessica Marizin. I lead the community team for BioWare. Thank you guys so much. Yay. We love you too. Yay. Thank you for coming out for our panel, Freaking Out the Neighbors. Uh, this is our second year here at GamerX, and this is one of our favorite conventions to attend. It's a very important convention to us, and uh, we are so, so excited to be here. The organizers are awesome, and this is a, a really well-run con. So I'm going to let everyone introduce Can themselves. And say the volunteers. Everyone say hi to the volunteers and give them lots yeah, of applause. Yeah, thank, thank you guys so much. Their butts off. Thank Woo! you guys so much. Go blue shirts. <laughs> so I'll let everyone introduce themselves. And since this is David's brainchild, I'm going to let him uh, talk a little bit about this panel, and then we'll jump right in. Let me start at the end this time. Sure. Uh, I'm Robin Taberge, and I'm a development manager at BioWare, and I'm currently working with the combat team. Yes. Making <laughs> the things to slay the dragons. Uh, my name is Karen Weeks. I am lead editor for uh, both of our IPs for currently working on Dragon Age Inquisition. Hi, my name is Patrick Weeks. I'm a writer and currently working on Inquisition as Dave's lackey. <laughs> and, or, and or minion. 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 Uh, and I'm uh, David Gator. I'm the, currently the lead writer on the Dragon Age series. I've been with Bioware for about 15 years now. OK, so freaking out the neighbors. Uh, I, I'm the one who proposed this panel to, to the uh, GamerX group. And uh, my, my fellow panel attendees are, at various times throughout the past couple of days have come to me and says, what is this panel about? Because <laughs> I didn't explain. No. Uh, freaking out the neighbors. Uh, Bioware has been putting LGBT content into our games for a number of years now, uh, basically ever since the days of Jade Empire. Uh, so it's not, it's not new for us. Uh, and if you've been following our games at all, it's, it's not new for you. Um, at various times, though, it feels like there are people out there uh, that is, it is incredibly new to them. And that's what I mean by freaking out the neighbors. Uh, we've been putting stuff into our games that, that uh, elicits concern from, from, the, from uh, portions of our audience. And I, the reason I wanted to put this panel together is that it's, it's not entirely fair to dismiss uh, all concerns that are raised. There, there are people that just basically do not understand why this is important, why this is something that Bioware would choose to focus on, and, uh, and what, it, what it means. Um, and I think uh, since we have uh, our uh, uh, person who leads our community team and who has to deal with the, the, the kind of feedback we get from our freaked out neighbors on a regular basis, Jessica, perhaps you could start with uh, explaining um, what the difference is between uh, negative feedback that, that is, that is uh, worthwhile to, co to consider and respond to versus the, the stuff that clearly isn't. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that the first thing, and you know, you guys encounter this on a day-to-day -day basis, is constructive feedback versus uh, just kind of um, negative feedback or just stuff that we're, we're going to tune out is, is what is, is at its very base is, is respect. What is respectful when you bring to the table? Uh, we always want to treat you with a level of respect and courtesy. Uh, if, if we're not treating you that way, you know, please come talk to me because you know, Aaron Flynn will have something to say about that to all of us. Uh, he's our GM and um, he is the nicest person ever, and he knows a little too much about all of us personally. Um, it's really scary. But, you know, we, we need to have a two-way dialogue that is based on a foundation of respect and civility, and coming to that is, is having constructive feedback, saying not just, I hate that, but I hate that, or I don't like that, or I feel very passionately 
against that or for that because of XYZ. Um, I think that having a, a dialogue or a debate, we, we are totally fine with uh, impassioned debate. That's 100% that's something that makes our games better. Um, our, I think that you can see a progression of our games. I really liked uh, Patrick's dedication in The Masked Empire about LGBTQ dedication that listening to the fan feedback, listening to panels, Tumblr posts, YouTube videos, we really do take that constructive feedback, what you're saying, not just positive, like, yay, good job, but I don't like that because X, Y, Z, but going and saying, oh, I hate you, or going in and just, you know, taking a picture of Dave Gator with, you know, devil horns. That's super funny. It's super funny, but, you know, Dave's, Dave's probably not going to read the rest of your art, or maybe he will, and no, I, I don't my, know. My block finger is so yeah. quick. Yeah, so, I, I mean, that, that's the difference, and I think that, you know, we're probably preaching to the choir here because you guys are all sitting, and I, I said it on another panel, and because we're all rated uh, uh, 18 plus here, um, you, don't, you don't pee where you sit. That's not how that you know, goes. Yeah. Dogs know that. Dogs don't pee in their kennels. They, they, just, they just don't. They learn that when they're puppies. You don't pee where you sit. So uh, when we're building a community, you, ch you just don't want to do that because that's, that's, that's not how we operate and that's not how you want to operate because if you're peeing where you're sitting, well, we're, we're just not going to sit there. Yeah. I think what's pertinent too is, is uh, recognizing the difference between constructive and non-constructive feedback. A lot of, a lot of people online, I find, uh, tend to view the, uh, the, the sort of the, the way they couch their argument as irrelevant. Do you ever get that? Like they, they tend to believe that even if they're being aggressive and insulting and, and, and uh, derogatory, like, like you're, you're, you're on the internet, you should expect that and just sort of tune mm. that part of it out and listen to my argument. So then when you sort of react to the fact that they're being so aggressive, they're like, well, you obviously just are, are, sh are shutting me down because you don't like what I have to say and you're not listening. And I think that that's that's uh, fairly common, and I don't think it's very fair. And it's not true. We're we're just shutting you down because you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No it's the internet. Attacks. That's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. There's there's a lot of people out there, and I will never have time to listen to all the opinions out there. So I'm probably going to listen to the ones that sound like they want to meet me halfway. That sound like they want to actually have a have a dialogue and say, I didn't like this and here's why and you guys do such a great job but this was really a failure as opposed to I hate you and you guys suck bio fail. Yeah. Like at that point it's like, <laughs> okay, I don't think you're actually trying to help at that point. Yeah, the ones that are actually attempting to engage us in a dialogue as opposed to just spouting opinions. And I don't think that necessarily is just among the trolls out there, right? which we know who, who they are. I mean, there's, there's people on both sides of the, of the equation, and sometimes they want to just vent, and that's cool. Venting is, is fine, but if you actually expect us to listen and respond and, and, and sort of treat what you're saying as, as something we should take into consideration, uh, an, attempt, an actual attempt at communication is actually required. Yeah, and um, I, I think my last point that I want to make is it's just not fair to you guys for us to waste time focusing on those people who are not being constructive because for every tweet that we're spending on people who are saying I hate you we're not tweeting at someone who is trying to engage in a helpful dialogue and that's just that's just not fair um, and I hate it when other people do that when I see like celebrities or um, you know my friends focusing on the just negative, uh, sad people who don't know whether through ignorance or through having personal problems in their life that just want to lash out and they're not tweeting back or they're not engaging in a forum dialogue with, with people who are, are there for the right reasons. And so, so we just, it's, it's so tempting to feed the trolls, but. <laughs> 
it's hard to resist sometimes. I know, I know I've done it. I, after the uh, the Dorian reveal a couple of weeks ago, I was getting a, a barrage of negative tweets. And for a while, I was just like, block, block, block. But after a while, after a while I was like, all right, bitches, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to respond to a few of these. But after, after I did that, I don't know that, it act, that the responding actually made me feel better at the end of the day. I do want to talk a little bit about our neighbors, though. Mm -hmm. So our neighbors are our fans, our, our critics, our, the media, um, our neighbors, the people that we have around us. Um, we have a lot of, a lot of criticism, the, the healthy criticism, and we, we do listen to it. And uh, some of them I, we've written down and we've talked about it. And so I, I want to uh, talk a little bit about that. Um, so one of the points that we hear a lot is, why do we spend so much effort on such a small part of our audience? Uh, wouldn't that effort be better spent on the majority of our players? I think part of the answering that question is addressing the amount of effort these people seem to think this requires. <clears throat> no, it, it's fair. I mean. Uh, uh, when they say, why do you spend so much effort, there's a bit of observational bias there. Because they, they, they hear people talking about it, and if you focus on it, if you're the one who's focusing on that, it's going to seem like, that. oh my god, that's all everybody's talking about, why do they spend so much time? The amount of time we actually spend, uh, at Bioware at least, uh, uh, talking about you know, uh, how we can not be shitty, <laughs> Uh, it isn't that much. It just requires that at some point in the development process, I mean, not hopefully not just one, there are usually several points and checks that something will come up and we stop <clears throat> and say, are we comfortable with what we're seeing, what we've done? It's not always going to be fair across, across the board. You know, fairness has to, to weigh against, you know, the, the cost of development and, and what we can actually spend our time on. Uh, but have we, have we, have we, D done our due dil diligence is what's important, to stop and do that. And in terms of the actual content, again, I mean, uh, uh, we have a big game. If we're talking, say, for, for Bioware games, about the romance content specifically, we, you know, we have this entire thing, you know, like, mm, the story. <laughs> the game is, what, 60% combat. combat. Uh, so when we're talking about the romances anyway, for, in, in, as a group, that's that's not the majority of the game by any means. No, you're uh, gathering elf root and upgrading your armor and <laughs> fighting stuff. Crafting and, yeah. potions. Crafting <laughs> Before you go on to the elf root. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've got at least two hours on character creation alone at the beginning. Of the game. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, well, if I could, well, I, think, I think one other factor, I think that what that question, um, that question implies something that I think is also untrue, um, that as a guy, in my uh, my main first Dragon Age Origins playthrough was a uh, female elf mage who romanced Leliana, and my first Dragon Age 2 playthrough was a uh, female hawk who romanced Isabella. And I talked yesterday to a straight woman who was really happy playing a male shepherd romancing Caden in Mass Effect 3. So I think it's false to say that just because someone does not identify as LGBT themselves, that they have no interest in this content, and this content could only possibly be interesting to the gays. Mm. Um, it is. A, it is a role-playing game. Yeah, like yeah. a lot of times that that kind of exploration, or you know, going, wow, I wonder what this would be like. I wonder what it's like to have this kind of relationship as this kind of person. That's that's a really valuable, interesting thing for and, everybody. And we know we know this is true. I mean, we don't have to rely on anecdotal evidence. Uh, Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2 both had te telemetry collected, and it was opt-out telemetry, which means that you had to specifically go in and say, no, I don't want to provide any data to, to the telemetry. And it, may it doesn't collect any personal information and stuff. It just collects the data on what choices you're making. And we, can't, we don't know anything about the player themselves, so we, don't, we, don't, we know who made male characters, like the percentage breakdown of male characters and female characters. We don't know if the people who made those characters themselves are male or female. So when it comes to like who chose what romances, we, we know the percentage of players who, 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 who uh, partook of optional uh, uh, content, like the gay romances. 
And when we got our telemetry back from Dragon Age Origins, for instance, uh, the percentage of people who actually used the, the gay content was a lot higher than the sort of the, the conventionally held figures would account for. So you have to think, okay, either we have a lot more LGBT fans than, than anybody seems to think are out there, or there's a lot of people who aren't LGBT themselves who, are, who want this content. So it, it applies both ways. It, it, just because we're providing LGBT content, I mean, yes, it's, it's great that we're providing this uh, for the LGBT fans, but we're also providing content that m people, more people than just LGBT fans want. Yeah, I, I think that it's a total misnomer to talk about majorities at all. Uh, demographics don't correlate to personal preferences. You could talk to a panel of women or men or, or people of a certain ethnicity or, or um, sexual preference and they will all give you completely different answers. And um, that just has to do with gamer styles. And we have surveys and, and very, very um, specialized market research and we just don't base our, our game features on uh, demographics and, and majorities that way. And that's, so. that's for more than just romances as well. If you're talking about a game that has choice, there are always going to be choices that the majority of players will pick. Uh, good and evil choices. Everybody says, oh, I love having good and evil choices. From our telemetry, as a for instance, do you know that, that the vast majority of people always choose good, the good choices, no matter what? Like, uh, I think it's uh, the last one we got back, that on average, any good choice, you can good or evil choice, you can count on about 86% of the players picking the good choice all the time. So because, because and you, if you want to make that argument, you would say, well, only 14% of players are ever going to choose evil choices, so maybe we shouldn't provide them. <laughs> this is a game that, that is predicated on providing choice to the players, and there's a certain amount of inherent value applied to choices when they exist, even if that player is never going to take them. You, do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you encounter those choices, you think, oh, that's cool that that's a choice. I wonder if doing that thing would have an effect. And even if I'm going to just always pick that one, the fact that I encountered it and it could have changed my game or provided me a different experience is in itself valuable. I mean, I think if you want to, yeah, anyone who says, why are you making these, why are you making this for such a small percentage of your audience, uh, I think possibly the best, the best response is, so you're saying we should cut rogues. <laughs> right? <laughs> because more people played a female hawk and, or sorry, a female warden and romance Leliana than picked rogue. Poor rogues. <laughs> poor rogues. Poor rogues. Poor rogues. Poor rogues. Which is their loss. I love rogues. Yeah, rogues are awesome. awesome. <laughs> so I think, I think that brings us to a good point. Um, another, another big question we get. Are games really the place to address social inequality? It seems so deliberate and awkward. It feels like you're pandering to gay players for money. <laughs> or pandering to the social justice crowd to earn points. <laughs> uh, okay, pandering. Uh, I find that, that there's a, this thing online, and you will see it in, in more than just the word pandering, where people like to come up with, with words uh, that they use, where it's clear they don't really know what it means. But what it boils down to is, I don't like that. Uh, Mary Sue has become shorthand for, that's a female character that I don't like. Uh, what, what? Well, um, I think that the Garrus romance in Mass Effect 2 was an entirely appropriate and organic evolution of the character, um, and the Tally romance was fan service. Fan service. <laughs> that, that's, it's like, it's like it's, is it bad for us to provide contents that we believe our fans would, would like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah if, oh, if it's, it's only bad if it's, if it's providing content for fans that who aren't me. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe very strongly that we are past the point in saying games are a, an art form. And just like any form of art, games like novels, like film, like paintings can explore deep and meaningful themes. And 
these are our themes that can be explored. Not every game needs to explore them, but our, our games do. And it, it's not as if, okay, the, it, it's deliberate to talk about. We talk about the, these issues outside of the game, but when it comes up in the game, it doesn't, it's not necessarily like, like, it, it, like, so some people, they immediately jump to this extreme version. It's like, they're gonna start the game and the, the rainbow star is gonna flash across the screen <laughs> and say, wait, 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 just so you know, we have a message. It, so, it, it doesn't wait, need to you're, that delivery. You're saying people might be concerned that it's shoved down their throat? <laughs> Don't get me started on that. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't pre-filled out your voter registration for you. Uh, so, um, the the is this an appropriate place to to deal with uh, like uh, social inequality? Uh, all kinds of entertainment are good places to deal with with the, 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 the idea of social inequality. It has to be considered, and games, by virtue of being games, should not be held to, to like. Do not get to a free pass. The, these, are, these are questions that come up in television, in, in movies, and just because we're games, we still, this still needs to be considered. And the, the act of considering them doesn't need to be something that, that hits, you, is, hits you over the head with it. it just, it's, 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 if it does, that's poor writing. Mm -hmm. And that, that ideally, once you play the game, it will be invisible. And as a, you know, as a consumer, I still walk away making my own decision mm -hmm. of how I want to feel, how I want to interpret that theme. Um, I, you know, maybe someday there's going to be cliff notes about games. There's already lecturers. Um, our, our games are not high school appropriate, but lecturers, college professors who use video games and our games specifically um, in their in their courses. So it's. It's there. It's it's talked about. It's not necessarily we're not putting it in there for for to to make some kind of political agenda out of it. It's 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 art. It's it's a it's there in society and it's there everywhere in, in film, in movies, in literature. And it's one that's I mean that's the point of role playing games, right? Is having a bunch of choices, getting to explore. Sometimes you explore someone who's exactly like you. We were talking about when we were a big issue we all have is trying to explain to our parents what we do. <laughs> and um, we tell the grandparents who work with computers, we tell our parents they're kind of like choose your own adventure books, only they're really big and complicated. But when we were um, Patrick sat down with my dad, who's who's native, he's Southern Cheyenne, and and took him through the character creation in Mass Effect 2, I think, and he made a character who looked exactly like he did, and he was so tickled, and so there's, you know, I was I thought it was pretty cool. So there's, you know, part of it that you want to be able to make a character like you that you can identify with, that feels like you. That's why I love, you know, I love my femme chef, you know, because she's a badass woman doing doing her thing and I like being able to identify that. So there's that side of it. But then there's the exploration side, you know, trying to have an experience that's unlike you and learn from that. And that's, you know, I feel like we owe it to you guys and we owe it to ourselves to provide as much depth and as many choices and as many ways for all of us to collectively experience that as we can. And that's something that's important to us as developers. Um, you know, it's the right thing to do. Or we feel like it's the right thing to do, and that's it's it's important to put resources and effort into that. And I think one other point: uh, when you have a game, I mean, obviously, okay, if you're making a game where you're just going around blowing up asteroids or something, then yeah, that that doesn't really apply. But when you make a game that has people, that has politics, that has relationships, that has relationships, that has the opportunity to explore these social themes. Um, us refusing to weigh in on that agenda, us refusing to, to take a stance or allow the opportunities. Or at least consider what it is that it's saying. Is effectively reinforcing the status quo. The decision, say, it, our saying, oh, we're not going to make a choice, is making a choice. So mm -hmm. if we're gonna make a choice anyway, we might as well make the right one. So here's... Here's another one. This isn't this isn't in game. This is about this is about us outside of the game that I think I think ties nicely into that. Why talk about it? 
Games have done this well and not mentioned that their characters are gay at all. So why do you have to announce it and make a big deal out of it? Why focus on romance? Isn't just having good characters and stories more important? Well, I think a lot of people don't know that there are games like this out there. And if we don't talk about it, there's no way for them to find it. Like I, I discussed with my friends um, and in Edmonton, like Bioware, you talk to a lot of people that live there and you tell them what you do and they have no idea. They've never heard of it before. You start, start describing the games, they're like, oh, is that like Halo or Call of Duty? And I'm like, no, it's an emotional experience. <laughs> and it's out there for you to get to. <laughs> So I think it's, it's important that we discuss it. Like I have a lot of female friends that had never picked up a video game in their life. You know, they see, they see Halo and Call of Duty or they see Super Mario. You know, that's what we grew up with. Like, you know, you're, you're dealing with young adults now that haven't always had video games. And so it's new to them. And you tell them, like, it's a, this is an active movie. You can, you can be in the movie. You can have this experience outside of yourself and try new things in a very, very safe environment. And I think it's really important that we share that because it, it's moving. It's moving. It creates change um, for the individual. And I think whenever you create change on the individual level, you're feeding a much larger change. And I think that's very, very important to prioritize. If, if I could add to that, I. I, I completely agree, and I think that it is great that we do bring these, those things up and raise awareness, but I, I also think that the question presupposes uh, another, another incorrect statement on our, or another incorrect idea, which is that we are the ones putting all this focus on it. Um, Dave, oh, in doing the Dorian Q&A, this thing that I thought of myself and Karen totally wasn't going to say I until was, I... He totally stole my thing. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, Dave, in doing the Dorian Q and A, mentioned Dorian being gay as point what nine of thirteen, something that was the like. Very that. Last one. It was it was the very last question. So, Dorian is a complex character, a Tevinter magister who wants to kind of fight against the negative stereotypes of his country and uh, create something brighter. He is. He is confident to the point of arrogant. He is a fascinating character, and him being gay is one part of it. But gay is what the, um, the, the website is what is what the it. website headline read. Like if you saw if you saw the interview, you could just imagine like the little red dot focusing on that and like gay. Yeah, I mean, it got picked up by the media, and so there was a lot of focus on that. And then of course, people when there's a headline. A lot of people read the headline and sort of treat it as if that's the entire story. So. And if it's that, and as though that's what we said. Yeah. What we said is Dorian is this complex, interesting character. And what a newspaper article said was gay. And then everyone says, Bioware, why are you always focusing on the gay? We're, well, we're not, but as like once the fight starts, we have to, we have to represent that character fairly and say, well, no, we're not going to shy away from that. Mm -hmm. I, th I think what, what is it like, pertinent to the question, a lot of people, with relation to Dorian specifically, were like, well, why did you mention it at all? Why not just leave it at, you know, he's, he's, that he's from Tevinter and he has these characteristics, he's cocky and stuff like that, and, and stop there. And, and, and then I just get to the point where it's like, so, so what you're saying is the, the only way to include this content in a way that you would find acceptable is to be completely silent about it. Is that, is that what needs to happen in order for you to feel comfortable? that uh, uh, we can't mention that we have this content and actively invite these players to the table who might not otherwise know that the content is there at all. I mean, are you saying, well, well, they can play the game and then they'll discover the content? Yeah, but that applies to everything. We, we announce that we have romances. We want to we announce that we allow you to play a female character. We want to announce that you, you were able to have gay romances if you so choose. And you can choose not to. But we're not going to be silent about it just to make somebody feel more comfortable because there's content for you as well. And if, that, if that's not the content that you're looking for, move on. Well, yeah. And by talking about it, at least this way, the players can make that choice up front. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Dorian seems really cool. I'm going to be a male inquisitor so that I can romance him. You know, like you can make that, that choice for your first playthrough. And then you know what? You can go back and do it again. And to be... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and to be perfectly honest, it's something that journalists and fans are really excited about, no matter how much uh, anytime we go into like interviews and we're like, all right, let's talk about vast exploration. They're like, yeah, but what about the romances? <laughs> and we have, you know, like uh, our Cullen thread hit like a thousand pages and I'm like, all right, what are we going to do about like load times on this thread? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's important to our fans. It's important to people who are reading these stories and we, we have to recognize that. Yeah. It's like, we're going to say, hey, you people who want to know more about the romances, interest, ro interested in romances, you know, hush, hush. You know, the gameplay and stuff is way more important. It is important. And we're, we're going we're gonna to talk a lot about that. In fact, that, I think that's the majority of our marketing. That's when, if you look at what Bioware actually talks about when we market, the, 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 the percentage skew is not towards the romances. But... There are people who are interested in romances, and that, that's a totally legitimate thing. If you, if you, that's the most important thing in the game to you, cool. So we're going to answer those questions, and we're going to put that out there. When they talk about, but there are games that have gay characters that don't ballyhoo it. Well, those are probably games where you also don't romance those characters, so it's, it's not really relevant except in the context of you experiencing the story, which is what they're, they're going to focus on. This is the kind of game that we make, a game where there are, there are choices that, that we have lots of different players who believe in things being more important to them. Some people just want to go and, and kill shit. Some people just want to go and romance everybody and, and have that nice little combat mini game that happens occasionally. <laughs> and that is perfectly fine, because God forbid on the internet that there's somebody who enjoys something you like in a way that, that you don't enjoy, right? Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I mean, ideally, we'll, we're providing a bunch of stuff and you can pick the things you like to do and maybe you can try something new and maybe you try something new and you hate it you don't have to do it again but you know it's our job to provide as 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 long a buffet as we can of of choices and things for you to do and so yeah people are going to talk about okay i went to asparagus that's a really lame thing to have in a buffet but elf fruit elf fruit yes <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to be honest as a fan i also want my expectations set because i was pretty upset when you told me I couldn't romance Dorian as, as a lady. So I was like, <laughs> well, I guess my first playthrough is going to be as Dude Inquisitor, so that's fine. <laughs> but I wanted my expectations set so that he wasn't like, there, there, pop it, but it's whatever. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So now my expectations are set. But it's fine. I want. I want to. Uh, I want to move on. You know that he does that, right? You really. Uh, it's very <laughs> close to that. Yeah, that exact oh, word. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> well, now I'm upset, and we have to move on. <laughs> now I'm definitely going to do that when I'm romancing Iron Bull I, I as a lady. A, <laughs> I should just put a hey, Dorian. little condition on if origin account equals Jessica Marison. <laughs> <laughs> Riff hard. Uh, uh, okay, so so this one. Now that we've laughed, um, last question. Um, your game feels like it's being made for minorities. Tip tip. And straight white people are the afterthought. I'm putting my fedora on. Is that, is that the entire question? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for not reading that at all in a loaded manner. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, no, it's hilarious. It's, I love I it. I always find it fascinating that we make a game where we, we've specifically paid attention, and, and Dave, to kind of a crazy German degree, like, <laughs> will balance the scales so that things are, okay, we've got this, and, the, and okay, we have an equal number of boxes, and it doesn't end up being entirely equal, but I well, mean, no, I we're talking we're yesterday that we have huge have. charts of characters and yeah. who does what, and it's not just romances, it's who's a rogue, like, you know, but I don't believe, want an entirely uh, rogue party, but you know, yeah. so we want to balance a whole bunch of stuff across the board, but, and we're very conscious of that, and we put ridiculous amounts of time into planning that. And, and that said, I think we can say that Straighty is probably okay. <laughs> I think I think Straighty's Straighty. gonna make it through this one. He can, <laughs> he can still uh, okay. get his battle boner. Yes, yeah. his battle boners will still be happy. Uh, okay, the, the, the th I guess the nature of that question, and I mean, the nature of the question relates to privilege. And, and, and I, it's a word that I, I'm always reluctant to invoke because it, it's been used so often 
uh, or at least it's viewed as kind of an attack word, right? Yeah, it's become yeah. a bad word. It's become a bad word, but it's not really. Privilege just means that there are experiences that you, you do not have the perspective to, to, to recognize. I have privilege. I, I, you know, I, I can be gay, still a guy, still white. And that's something that if you just recognize that I'm not going to know, you know, I, I, I can may have empathy, say, for women. Be, you know, absolutely, I have lots of empathy for women, but I'm not going to know what it's like to be a woman. I, I, if, if a woman says to me that something is important to her, I'm not going to say, well, no, that, that, why, I, don't, I don't understand why that should be important to you. Why would I? Yeah. And if I could recognize that, that you know, there's a reason why I don't understand why it's important, that's just, that's just you know, recognizing that you have privilege. That, that's all it is. So when someone says, like, what was the question again? About how we make games oh, for minorities. Right. Yeah. So part of that is, 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 is that there's this view that, okay, so there's so many games that, that just have content for, for straight white guys. Absolutely. Without question. And the idea for that, that from their perspective that suddenly there's, there is actual equality actually from their perspective means they're getting less. So they feel like, oh, why am I getting less? Which means less than all of it. Yeah, I mean, you compare it to, you, okay, compare it to Kotor. Well, okay, Straighty, you got. Stop if, using that. Oh, <laughs> I own that one. That one, I can he, say. He it. can say he. I have he, S word privileges. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking okay. it back. But. Taking it back. Okay, a, 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 straight, a straight male player in Kotor <laughs> playing a, a playing a, a a male character in Kotor had one option, Bastila, and in Dragon Age Origins, a, that straight player had two options. They're still getting more. The fact that that uh, that gay and bisexual content was added didn't give them less. They're still getting more. And a straight player, straighty. And <laughs> in DAI, like Cassandra is, as someone who likes ladies, Cassandra is not hard on the eyes. And she is strong and she is badass and she is really, really attractive. Cheekbones if, for miles. And if she is not your type, Josephine is adorable and also gorgeous. And I think mm. you've got, I think you're going to be okay. And actually, if you look between, say, say between DA2 and DAI, or between DAO, and DAI, you actually still have the same number of options. Can I say what I said last year at our panel? You, you could. You get a romance. You get a romance. <laughs> you get a romance. <laughs> uh, but if you're going to look at the total number of romances, like, okay, so there, I had two options in DAO, and I had two options in DA2, and I still have two options in DAI, but there's other people getting options, and you're going to say, well, wait, 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 wait. Why aren't I getting all the options? Well, that's too fucking bad. <laughs> You'll have to start another playthrough. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. So, I mean, uh, uh, okay, so I, I guess the, the, it also relates to privilege. Is, is it, if that really bothers you, well, thank God you have so many other choices. <laughs> because that's the entire rest of the industry. And it's, if you're going to turn around and say, well, the entire rest of the industry, th th these, these gay, places. gay game players, they've been playing the games. <laughs> they obviously do. So I don't see why they should be catered to when they already have the same games available to them that I do. That is privileged because it's not the same. Because if, if, if they have an option and say it's, it's, it's not right for them, it's not like you can turn and say, well, I can get these options everywhere else as well. So I got my pick of all the games to choose from. You don't. You don't. And that's, that's really the inherent problem, right, in the industry is that if, if, if there was some breadth across the industry, if it was something that many games actually did, then it wouldn't be a focus of the media or fandom. People could have their, their choice among the buffet of games, which is what, what your average straight white player has had their, their, entire, their entire gaming existence. So why would they even think about that at all? But they just need to stop and recognize for just a small moment that that's not the experience of every player out there. And a lot of people are playing games because they love games. They just would like the games to be a little bit better. Yeah. Um, Pierre Bourdieu has a term that he uses 
that I, I prefer to privilege because like David says, it's become this attack word and it's called doxa. And it's this idea that you can't imagine any experience other than the one that you experience. It's like you can't imagine the sky any other color than blue. You can't imagine uh, time other than linear, which not all cultures experience time as linear. But you can't wrap your mind around anything other than, you know, you, you can't imagine sit, sitting, not sitting on a toilet. Obviously, not everyone sits on a toilet. Some people squat on the toilet. Um, I have a funny story about that. No, seriously, you look, you look under the stall to be like, oh, no one's under here. Let's not go down that route. No, it's true, it's true. But, but the thing is, that's, that's privilege. You can't imagine an experience other than the one that is in your world. And I think that we have to be cognizant as developers that we're coming in and you know David has his experience Patrick has his experience Karen Robin I have my experience and we can't just place that in the game obviously we bring our experiences and and as developers we all come together and we bring that to the table and it's, it's diverse and, and it's, it's true and, and we want that. And that's why choice matters so much. Well, and that goes into our games too. Like often around the office when we're touching on more, you know, complex subjects, we do a poll, we talk to everybody, we take everybody's different values into consideration because we have, what, 300 plus people working on Dragon Age right now? That's a good sample size, you know, of, of different opinions and different backgrounds. And, and it definitely, you know, like, that's why we build this choice in, because we have a good p pool of people saying, this is what I want. Do you have any closing thoughts? Because now we're over, over time. I feel really bad. Can, is there any way we can have, like, a, like a few minutes for questions? We yep. can? Yeah, we can? Awesome. Cool. Oh, my God. Right. You guys are awesome. <laughs> give everyone give them a round of applause, yeah. because I was a bad moderator. <laughs> All right. We're gonna take it to questions. I'm gonna run around. Raise your hand if you wanna ask a question. Oh my god, I'm running, I'm running. <laughs> okay, I saw your hand first. Then you. Awesome, thank you. Uh, my question relates to um, the process that goes into uh, creating new IP or uh, designing a new world setting. Um, when you're trying to figure out what the uh, societal attitudes or the views of the average Joe in the world, the world that you're designing um, are on LGBT issues. Do you start from kind of like a baseline assumption that um, our world is going to have the same um, societal biases and prejudices as the real world, as, as our society that we live in? Or do you kind of say, well, you know, this is our fictional world that we're creating. Um, the, real world rules don't apply. Um, and specifically, uh, in particular, uh, I don't know if any of you can speak on um, uh, development of Jade Empire, but that was a game that specifically was modeled after real world culture. So, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know that it was specific. It, it was, I would say, inspired by um, ancient China, but it, it, it definitely wasn't modeled after it. Right. Specifically, it was uh, you know to the same extent that Dragon Age was modeled after Europe. Yeah, I think it's, was. It's, it is. It is a Eurocentric fantasy world, but I mean, so you start with that as a baseline. Sure, absolutely, with no question. I think I, I think everybody would, but then you're looking at well, it's a weird argument that happens sometimes. And people will say, well, uh, it, it it should be more like this because it's modeled after medieval Europe, so everything should be like medieval Europe. But then they they will on other points will say, but it's a fantasy world, so it doesn't have to be realistic. It needs, what it needs is to be plausible. And it needs to have internal consistency. Be, anything beyond that, we can decide what we want to keep or what we want to throw away. We don't have to adhere to real world medieval history. And if, if we would, well, we wouldn't have female players at all because they would all be kept in a tower in their nice little hoop skirt and be married off at the age of 14. Okay, but to be, to be fair, a lot of the, a lot of the, the assumptions in that 
people who actually study medieval history more deeply mm. know that a lot of the things people assume, well, there were no people of color in medieval history. Well, okay, no, that's actually entirely false. And anyone who studied medieval history knows that's a bunch of garbage. But because everyone's understanding of medieval history is- Is a Ren fair, and that's where it stops. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. But to, and it depends on the IP, because like when, when we were working on Mass Effect and Mass Effect 3, talking about you know, the, the implications of, of same-sex romance, same romances there, that's a more real world. I mean, it's, it's supposed to have evolved from Earth how it is right now as we know it. And so when we were thinking about that, it was like, well, by that point, the way society is moving now, it'll be a non-issue. So it's, we're just going to assume... No big deal. We're not even going to mention it because that's how it's going to be. In the same way, we're just we're assuming that technology has allowed a lot of diseases to be cured, and you know, sort of trying to envision the progress that has been made, starting from a relatively real world place. So it 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 is depending on the world, and I need to shut up. I think I'll, I'll just sorry. sorry to interrupt, but I, I think I'll just close with just the uh, there are two additional c considerations that go into that. One is that the the being realistic is not necessarily the goal so much as the player experience. But we also don't necessarily need the world to be utopian because we still want conflict. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we have to balance. We don't need to be realistic if that's going to mean a, a shitty experience for the player. We can, then we can point our fingers and say, well, it's realistic to have homophobia. So if you chose to play a gay character, well, welcome to a shitty experience. That doesn't need to be the case. <laughs> uh, but we, we, we don't need to be, have everybody treated as, as if, uh, as if you know, it wasn't a thing at all because that's not necessarily true to the gay experience either. Hi. Um, you guys mentioned that you know the media is kind of part of this umbrella of neighbors who are always being freaked out, and I feel like they've really unfairly judged your games based on the romance. You know, Mass Effect One was kind of labeled a sex game by Fox News, Think, things things like that. But uh, I feel like almost you guys are taking that criticism a bit too harshly because the the scenes in your games have really become like more censored as they. You know, one, two, three, like Samantha Trainer's having a shower in her lingerie. What's up with that? And, you know, dra dra and uh, Dragon Age 2, it's like they get in bed, it's cut to black, cut to black, before they even take anything well, off. Well, actually, that, that sex sim that, that, uh, that, that Fox was going on about, there was, there was a little blue side boob. That was it. It was the Side most... boob? You can get that on afternoon TV. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, right? But, well, yeah. but that's the thing. It's, it's, I mean, it was, if, you, if that's why you bought the game, you're going to be really disappointed when you got there because that's yeah. all you get, right? So, but it is a lot of perception, right? We haven't really changed the way that we've done the game. And some of it's technical. And yeah. some of it, I mean, for example, the uh, trainer taking the shower in her, uh, in her lingerie was quite simply, we couldn't get a nude model. Um, yeah. and, and, and then we were supposed to get Steam to cover the fact that she wasn't nude. We were going to imply that she was nude, but use Steam to cover it. And then the Steam effect turned out it like, it, it broke on so many levels, and we're memory. like, okay, yeah. she's in lingerie, and we're Woo. not fading to black, and people who want the lesbian romance actually get to see something. I, I will say, though, <laughs> that we have discussed that as a, as yes. a group, yeah. and it's hard Absolutely. because we're Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can we have this conversation? Is this okay? Is this rude? <laughs> we, we have the conversation avoiding eye contact yes. a lot of the time. Yeah. There's a lot of like, studious like, note taking. We have this okay. conversation where we're like, we're an 18 plus game, I think we can have nipples. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just don't, make, don't get don't me started on, on, yeah, well, and don't get me started on boob physics. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys um, mentioned uh, addressing critics, addressing the media, and addressing fans already. But I have a question about re regarding other developers. So there are other developers who are getting flack for not giving people enough choices in character development. I'm not gonna name any names, but ironically, we're all staring at a big logo of them. <laughs> but <laughs> what, what kind of advice do you have for, for them and how will they react or how they even explain themselves or how they well, go through the development well, process? Well, I think it's, it's really difficult because um, you don't, you don't want to sling shit at another developer. You never want to, it's, it, that never ends well. Um, well and, and do I, we understand, I mean, we know yeah. there are technical limitations. We probably have a pretty good idea of what, yeah. there are heartbreaking how things. decisions were made. We've had to cut stuff that, that like, is oh, painful. God, really, we, we gotta want. cut that? Come on. So there's always more to a story, you know, in the same way, 
the media kind of treats everyone the same way. So there's there's empathy and understanding, yeah. I think. That said. That said. That said, uh, uh, sometimes the way that is communicated could be better. Uh, but I mean, then again, we've all we've all been there and stuck our foot so far to up our down our mouths that you know it's coming out of our ass. <laughs> So it's like, you know, mm, okay, they really stepped in it, you know. Yeah. So you, you, but you I mean, on a them. professional level, we, you know, see each other at, at <clears throat> conventions and occasionally when we come out of our developmental holes and go talk to each other, you know, when we talk about it, what did you do? How did you deal with this? What? Yeah. So I think there is a, a level of, you know, inspiration and, and homage and, you know, oh, that was cool. How did you guys do that? So, you know, we do talk about it and you can, you encourage can do, creativity in various ways. Yeah, you can do positive comparisons. I just think you never, no developer ever gets any mileage out of out of comparing themselves in a negative way to another. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't, you don't want to go, you don't want to go to somebody and say, see, see, you should have done it like us. No, oh, too bad for you. That, because <laughs> you, you don't want to do that. And, and there's uh, any well, number of things we haven't done, yeah, right? Yeah, there are things we can look at and go like. They could be calling us out on, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's better to, to keep it positive, but we do try and, okay, shut up, sorry. No, I, no, I was just saying, so I think this, no, I'm a bit of a one. You're fine. Okay. I was just saying, so I think this is our last question. Okay. okay. Hi. Hi. Um, I have two really quick questions. Um, the first one is, I know, addressing the first topic we talked about, about not feeding the trolls, I'm not defending them or anything, but I think a good majority of those people approach it in that um, light because they think that that will get them a response. So mm -hmm. I guess what's your suggestions, if you have any, for giving constructive feedback without blending into all the other voices and not being pushy and annoying and saying the same thing a million times? Well, you may, you may have to say the same thing a million times. I think okay. the thing is just to, if the person it seems like somebody you could communicate with, then, then do at the very least. It, it's, it's like a, I think I mentioned the the my response to Bastel a number of years back. This the straight white guy. He 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 approached the topic and I thought he was misguided, but he was reasonable. And when I, I may not have reached him, but I reached a lot of other people. And I think that at the end of the day, if you can approach somebody in a, re in a reasonable manner and be the bigger person, everybody else at least is going to recognize that. And if you're the million and first person who has said something to us, that's something we damn well, about, damn well better be listening to. Yep. So, you know, your, your message is as valuable as everyone else who is, who is saying that, and it's adding weight to something that we should be looking at and moving towards. So just saying it and, and I would also being interrupted. <laughs> They're if married. I, if I could... Uh, <laughs> If I could add, please go ahead. I will. I will stand by saying that we always listen. Um, and if the fact that we always listen does not mean that we do not always do what people are saying we should do, uh, there are things happening behind the scenes that we can't control. There are things happening that you know. In order to make a game, there are decisions that have to be yeah. made. Listening is is not obeying. Listening mm -hmm. is is hearing and taking into account what someone is saying. Because no matter what the opinion is, there's going to be a, other opinions across the board, right? So we, we, we do, cannot listen just to the people on our forums or, or on, on Tumblr. There are, there are a lot of opinions to take into account. And we, are, we do sit down and discuss them and, and eventually are going to have to make a decision. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I'm, I'm getting, I don't know, Dave gets tweeted a lot, I get tweeted a lot. I, the only questions I really won't answer are the ones where either I have no idea what the answer is or I can't answer because that's not part of the information reveal that we're, you know, it's not something we're prepared to talk about in Dragon Age Inquisition yet. Or they're abusive and I just block them. Or it's about combat and I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Robin about that. I feel so warm and fuzzy with all of you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the end of our time here today for our panel. But if you didn't get to ask your question or you were too shy or you just want to say hello, we do have a signing at 1 p.m. Um, is it here? I think it's here. It's maybe here. Uh, Union Square, Panorama 3, across the hallway. Look at you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys are awesome. You know what's happening. We, because no we went so over time, we do need to skedaddle, but we'll, yeah. we'll, be, uh, we'll be there at 1 p.m. Thank you guys so Thank much. GamerX has been wonderful. You guys have been awesome.